Singularity. My name is Nicola, aka Socrates, and you're watching Singularity One on One. If you guys enjoy this show and want to support it, you can do so by writing a review on iTunes or simply by making a donation. Today, my guest on the show will be Dr. Gabor Forgach. Dr. Forgach is a biophysicist turned entrepreneur whose companies are printing tissues for medical and pharmaceutical uses, as well as for consumption, eventually, in the form of leather and meat. So, welcome, Gabor. It's, I'm so happy to have you on Singularity One-on-One. -on -one. Thank you. Thank you, Nico. Fantastic. So, Gabor, if I were to ask you to introduce yourself in your own few words, how would you do that? I would say uh, I am a theoretical physicist turned biophysicist turned tissue engineer turned entrepreneur. So there's so, that ongoing, it seems, endless process of becoming, of turning into something new. That's amazing. I love that. Isn't that what life is all about? Evolution, learning and progressing in the end of the day? That's exactly what it is. And you, you try to conquer always new territories. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm probably lucky that my life turned in, in, in the way it turned. And I had the occasion to do that continuously. Yeah, and, and I'm very lucky to have the opportunity to interview you here today. So I really appreciate that. And let me ask you the next question. How did you end up going from biophysics into bioprinting or even from physics into bioprinting because they seem to be very remote uh, disciplines one from another actually i don't know a single other physicist who went into bioprinting well uh a physicist going to bioprinting that i'm not that surprised that you have not encountered anyone like that before but physicists going to biophysics that's not that's not unheard and uh the the the, the question is how much time we have for this answer because this is a this is a long one so if if i needed to respond to the question how from theoretical physics i went all the way to bioprinting that would probably take 2 weeks so let's try to make things as as um as short as and and to the point as possible so let's make it in 3 minutes okay so I was always interested in the life sciences. In fact, I wanted to become a medical doctor, chickened out, um, and did the best, next best, marry the medical doctor. Uh, but there was always something on the back of my mind, clearly, uh, from that era. And um, doing brutally theoretical physics, at some point I realized that maybe there are five people in the world who understand what the hell I'm talking about. And maybe there are two who may, may be interested in it. And that did not satisfy me. So I went back to, uh, to the school and I, I did four years of biology, undergraduate biology, just to make sure that I, I speak the language. And then with a, with a friend of mine who is a biologist, we started talking to each other, serendipity hits, we found the topic of mutual interest, and the rest is essentially history. Then I established my own lab, um, uh, got into biophysics, uh, started seeing, looking for uh, the interface between the life sciences and bio, bio, biophysics or physics, and that was before the big boom of, of, of bio at the turn of the 20th century. And then once I was there, I was interested in, in how physics may be relevant to embryonic development, to the formation of shapes and organs, the shape of organs. And then we started building structures, biological structures ourselves, first by hand. And then we realized that we may use some kind of a printing mechanism. And uh, eventually that's how we converge to printing biological material. So that's the short answer. Okay, so that gives us sort of the short story of physics into, say, bioprinting. But how about bioprinting into entrepreneurship? Yeah. Why not work for a university somewhere as a full-time? Uh, uh, why don't you just work for other people? Why did you have to find your own companies? Well, I actually do work for other people. I still have my academic position, so I have not abandoned. I'm still supervising graduate students, although 
uh, my, my future aspirations are not necessarily compatible with that. I really would like to pursue my, my, my entrepreneurial life. Okay, so, so the answer to this question is serendipity. Uh, I have a son who is a businessman and uh, a smart cookie and he was always interested in what I was doing as a scientist. We started talking and he was intrigued by this printing business as many other people have been and at some point he said, well, maybe we should be talking about commercializing it. And so he uh, collected a couple of uh, bright young uh, colleagues of his and we started talking and um, Eventually, one of them said, well, look, guys, I think this should be a commercialized and I would be willing to, uh, to run it. Nobody else. Uh, there were four co-founders of Organova, the first company, and it turned out that the, that, that the one who decided to do it full time uh, has done a fantastic job. Organova by now is a 40, 45 people company listed on the New York Stock Exchange, so he did very, very well, uh, and, um, and that's how the whole thing started, and, and, and once you are a person who, who likes to move with the, with, 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 with the latest developments, uh, uh, this was a challenge for me as well, something new in my life, and so I was very, very pleased to be part of it and, and working with young people. And, uh, and see how this technology can be useful beyond pure academia. And that's how, that's how things uh, turned out. So, so can you perhaps tell us now a little bit more about the niche that Organovo is entering? What the main goal is there? What are the main products? So, so of course, at the very beginning, we thought that, hey, we are going to conquer the world. We're going to, we're going to use this technology to print heart, liver, kidney, all those organs. And then you become, of course, more humble. Uh, you realize that, hey, you, you have to start somewhere and you have to build it gradually. So the idea, yes, the idea was that uh, this technology is going to revolutionize um, uh, regenerative medicine, which... I think it still will, but then uh, uh, you recognize that uh, you have to be careful where you go, especially when you have a company and that company has to survive and you have to uh, provide uh, the, the salary to the, to, the, to the employees. So the niche where right now Organovo is, and one can read about it all over the place, uh, is that this technology is being used to print to engineer living human tissue constructs that are being used or will be used for drug development and drug testing. So, God forbid, you have a liver disease and you need a special drug for that. Uh, by biopsy, uh, we would take a few million cells from your still healthy liver, part of your healthy liver, grow those cells up in a certain in, in, to the numbers that are needed to make uh, a viable piece of liver tissue, but it's your own tissue, and then make maybe uh, a few copies of, of, of that tissue, and then try the drug in different combination, in different concentrations uh, on those, and figure out which one is the best for you. So this is the ultimate patient-tailored drug development process. And it has been announced by, by Organova a few months ago that they built the, 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 the most extended liver construct ever. And that liver construct a few days ago was again announced, has been sent to key opinion leaders, being experts, academic experts, who will validate this construct. And this construct was, of course, validated already in Organova's lab and it functions beautifully, and it, it, it functions as a, as a little piece of liver, and it's quite big. So it's several, uh, you know, the size of it is uh, a few centimeters in, in linear size, and even in height, it's, it's much bigger than, than everything else before. And so that's the, that's the niche where Organova is moving, mm -hmm. and is right now. And organs, that's, that's a later, that will be coming later. 
So the future roadmap includes basically eventually whole organs. Oh, of course, but but on what time horizon? Uh, I would not want to speculate right now because even this, I think, is is going to revolutionize uh, drug development itself. So why not just concentrate, fo focus on something that 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 has a reasonable chance, well, more than reasonable chance to succeed, and then let's ride on this and then later see uh, what else the technology can be can be used for. So let's say I have issues with my liver and I come to you and you take a biopsy. How long would it take for you to grow that tissue so that uh, the pharmaceutical company can start doing their tests? Uh, it, uh, I would say about three to four weeks. Oh, well, that's actually pretty fast. Wow. Yeah, but the the you see, the 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 time limiting or the 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 really the limiting constraining factor is the growth of the cells. So you have to grow the cells to the numbers that you can put together uh, an extended construct. So uh, those cells, the hepatocytes, the most important cell type in the liver, uh, they divide. At the same at the same rate as others while it's very difficult to maintain them uh, and 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 to grow them in vitro conditions in other words in the lab that's why this is a challenging project but Organovo has figured that out and once you know how to multiply them you know cells divide and every couple of days and so in 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 30 days uh, you can have uh, 2 to the 15th power that's a lot Mm -hmm. And then you feed them, and that organable can do uh, quite well and, and efficient. That's that's very impressive. So, so why not uh, step there and stop there and focus on that? Why and how did you decide to move on to the next company, which is called Modern Metal? Because <laughs> well, it seems there's plenty of work to be done in Organovo. Right, right. So uh, that has also probably a, a, a few reasons. Well, reason number one was that Organovo was doing well. I was the first the chief uh, scientific officer of Organovo. But at that time, so Organovo was, was founded in 2007, and I had my full academic position. I was teaching. I had, I had a number of, I, mean, I had a big, big lab. And uh, I was not prepared to quit my academic position. And meanwhile, Organova was hiring and was growing. And uh, it became uh, very difficult for me to maintain my role as a, as a, as a, as a, as a useful uh, chief scientific officer and at the, t at the same time running a 10 to 15 people academic lab. Moreover, uh, in 2011, Organovo has become public. And when it became public, uh, I did not feel comfortable being part of the company. Uh, I certainly was in, in, in involved in, you know, in consultations, discussing with, with the scientists there, but I didn't want to be, um, be in a managerial role of a public company at that time. Moreover, my son, uh, who was another co-founder of Organovo, he remained on the board. So I was, I said, okay, fine. I stepped down, but there's still one forgatch. <laughs> and, um, but meanwhile, in the lab uh, with my students, some of, some of my students who started thinking, well, here is this technology. We are able to, to, to print, to, to engineer human medical grade tissues. What else can we do? And I would not remember how exactly the, the term meat came up. In fact, we talked to other friends of ours outside of the university, and this was already uh, in the in the news. You know, people were thinking about how to how to engineer meat. It goes back a long, long time. In 1934, Churchill talked about it, and then and then a Dutch uh, individual, Alan van Halen, uh, was 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 advocating this for many many years. So, so we realized, hey, meat is a tissue, right? It's a muscle tissue. So, 
So, and it's a debt tissue. So if we are able to maintain living human gr medical grade tissues, we should be able to do something uh, with, with meats. And I'm not so sure that at that time we really knew what the hell we were talking about, but this was certainly a feasible, at least we thought a feasible direction. And so uh, the other reason was that Andras, my son, who, who was on the board of Organovo, but he was not involved in, in any way uh, in the day-to-day -day operation of the, of the company. He was in China at that time. He came back and he was looking what, what to do. He didn't want to continue with what he, he, he was doing before. And he said, so why don't we start another company? And I would run it. So he wanted to uh, flex his muscle. And it, <laughs> he turned out to be a brilliant uh, CEO, I have to say. And uh, so we started the company in 2011, uh, riding on some success uh, garnered with Organovo. We had the reputation. Uh, whatever we touched grants-wise materialized. So we, we, we thought, hey, now again we're going to conquer the world. And then in the process we realized, hey, if we can, if we can perhaps do meat, um leather is is another animal tissue and so why don't why don't we concentrate on leather because that's in some sense it's easier i, I would say maybe not easier but it, it is less controversial because you don't need to eat it you don't need to swallow it you don't need to inhale it and so um uh, that, that therefore we first concentrated on leather and by now, we are running the two projects uh, parallel, and both of them are doing fantastic. Fantastic. So, so let me ask you, how far along that process are we? How long before we can say, I can buy a leather jacket from your leather? Well, I don't, I don't know if that's what you want to buy or that's what I would like you to buy. Uh, again, the... What would you like me to buy? Okay, so let me just respond. Uh, to this question in the following way. You see, leather is, or rather hide, you know, hide is the, the skin of a dead animal, but the skin is a tissue itself. Meat is a tissue itself. So again, we're talking about cells. Cells need to be multiplied. Cells need to be enticed to form tissues. So again, the, the biology dictates a certain pace. Yes, sure, I would like to make you a leather jacket tomorrow, and that's not going to happen because there are many, many steps that we have to still work out. We can build, we can make leather, and we can make that leather, I would say, almost genuine leather in a sense that it's made, it's, it's, it's made by the same cells that create the skin and eventually the hide, and then, the, and then you have to tend the hide, that's the process of turning the hide into leather. We can do that. Now, in what quantity? So this is even on a bigger scale than making a little liver construct. We want to we sell millions of tons of meats, millions of square meters of leather. We need billions and trillions and many more cells. So making a leather jacket will require revolutionary changes in our cell culture techniques, that is to grow the cells. But I, what I can tell you is that <clears throat> there's a very good chance that by, say, by the end of 2015, if you have a lot of money, you will be able to buy your wife, if you're married, a Man little man. handbag made of this leather. Okay, so. And, and the reason I'm saying a lot of money, because at the beginning it's going to be expensive, so it's going to be sold to the people who can afford it, and it, that's the way how it is at the beginning. You know, Apple, Macintosh was very, very expensive at the beginning. Specialty item. It is going to be a, a luxury specialty item at yeah. the beginning. But if we can make it a, into a luxury item, then it's only the question of time, that that price will come down and will be affordable to others. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you will be able to scale it. And actually 2015 sounds pretty good. If you make it to, to market with a product 2015, that'd be pretty impressive. A, a limited, limited, 
you know, selection and the limited number. Yeah, that, that's still impressive. And I wish you all the very best with that process because it takes a lot, a lot of effort and, and persistency. Uh, and then the other parallel sort of product would be meat. Is meat, so it seems to me in my mind that we are kind of starting with leather, then meat would be the next step, and then organs would be the toughest, longest term products. Is that fair to say? Well, yeah, but I, I would not, I would not confound, uh, uh, you know, human regenerative medicine with uh, uh, consumer items made of, of animals. You see, Organova is the one. That's Organova and Modern Meadow are two separate companies. One is 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 focused on on human regenerative medicine drug testing and, and anything that is human biology uh, and medicine, this, this company is not doing anything that is alive at the end of the day. Of course, we start with cells, but the end products are dead tissues. Mm -hmm. And that's a very different thing. And, and none of us would like to sort of mix the two. And therefore, the two companies are going to stay away from each other. Yeah, there's some overlap in the technology, given the fact that I'm a co-founder of both. And Organo was using the technology that we developed in my lab, but beyond that, um, uh, we we all would like to keep the two companies separate. And so, it's hard to say that okay, first leather, then meat, and then organs, because uh, leather and meat, I can say yes, that's mud and meadow. We're progressing on that. Uh, how and when Organo is going to get to? You know, organs. That's uh, that's Organovo's uh, uh, plan. And but I have to tell you, we we have already made. It depends what you call organs, by the way. Organ. Um, even in my own lab, back in a few few years ago, we published that in 2000, uh, uh, 2007, 2008, We published already results on printing, and thus engineering functional blood vessels with this technology. Mm -hmm. Now, is a blood vessel an organ? Well, it's part of a, a bigger organ, the, the circulatory system, the circulatory organ, a circula circulatory organ. Um, and, and so, again, it depends. If you, if, if you are thinking about a liver or, 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 or a heart, yes, that's out there. And, and I don't want to make any predictions. Mm -hmm. But if you're thinking about <clears throat> parts of organs, then it's not it's not that far fetched, because like blood vessels, that's that's not gonna that can happen within anything be five to ten years. Yeah. Let me ask you this: Are you a vegetarian yourself? No, I'm not. You're not. No. So, uh, how do you feel about switching to in vitro meat? I wouldn't call it in vitro meat. That that How has would a you call it? bad connotation. If you if you go on the street and you go to Joe and you say, "Hey, Joe, would you like to taste this in vitro meat?" Well, guess what the answer is going to be. But if you say, "How about cultured meat?" That sounds more palatable, perhaps. And that's how we call that's how we call this 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 uh, this product. It's cultured meat. Now, it is going to be controversial as hell. There's no question about it. That's why we're trying leather. It's, it's, it's less controversial. There will be people who will embrace it, and we already encountered many. Uh, and there will be people, guess where? In France, I'm sure that that's going to be the last country <laughs> where they are going to taste anything like that. And that's fine. That's fine. So not everybody needs to uh, eat cultured meats. Uh, unfortunately, uh, big segments of the world's population simply don't have a choice. And, and, and there are millions and millions of people who have no access to animal protein. And so they are, uh, uh, they are mal badly fat, fed and, 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 and as a consequence have all kinds of diseases. So the way to think about it, I think, is, is, is there will be a, a selection you know, there will be a possibility to buy the regular meat, which is going to be more and more and more and more and more expensive. And eventually there will be this cultured meat, 
that nutritionally will be equivalent, if not even better, because we can control the properties. No hormones, no antibiotics. No, no antibiotics. Uh, uh, Organically uh, cultured meat. Cultured meat, yes. Organically that's... cultured. Oh, absolutely. This is the most <laughs> organic that you probably can ever imagine. Yes, yes. This is going to be very organic. And, uh, and, and, and why is it going to be appealing to many people? Because we do not kill a single animal. We will be using much less of the of the of the precarious and uh, and 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 valuable resources like water, electricity, land. Those are those are getting scarcer and scarcer items, and um, and all this could be done under the same roof. You know that you get the cells again through a biopsy from a cow. Uh, that goes into the building in one end and the cultured meat comes out at the other end. And this could be practiced anywhere in, in, in the universe. It could be in a, in a battleship, in a, in a, in a submarine. It could be, it could be in, in town. It could be in the Sahara. So, so... How many times uh, less resource intensive is the cultured meat? In, in, if we put money aside, how about the other things like water, energy, etc.? Uh, there is a study was made by a scientist at Oxford University at that time. She was at Oxford University to Tuomisto, a Finn lady and a Finnish lady. And, um, now, numbers like 99% land, 97% less water, and those are huge numbers. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. So the, the savings there would be enormous. Now, mm -hmm. there's no free lunch, right? So you can save somewhere, but something got to give because yeah. this is not yeah. going to be cheap. So where it's going to be expensive is you need that nutritional environment uh, the it's called the cell culture medium where you where you grow the cells, and that is a is an expensive baby. Uh -huh. So so overall the balance where that's going to be it's hard to predict at this point for sure. Just like with leather, at the beginning this is going to be more expensive than than regular industrial meats, but the price will come down. Many people would be willing to pay a premium because no animal is killed in the process, because no environmental harm is, 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 is involved. That's the way it's going to go, because you are a vegetarian, you don't want to eat a slaughtered animal meat, but maybe this one you will. Uh, it's hard to predict, but it's a very exciting game. There's a lot of marketing uh, you know, involved here. You already mentioned, I think, the term Frankenstein food. Uh, and some people have called it like that. Uh, so let me let me just dig into the sort of the core issue with with that sort of moniker, if you will. I've seen you eat uh, cultured meat on the stage of TEDx in a video. How many okay. times have you have you eaten meat like that? Twice. Twice. Well, again, uh, let, let's let's be more specific here. So the stuff I ate on the TEDMED stage in 2011 was a, a, a little teeny tiny piece of this cultured meat. Now, you also may know that in the summer of 2013, another group run by uh, by Dr. Mark Post in 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 in, in the Netherlands. Uh, came up with a with a with a hamburger, and there was a tasting, a celebrated tasting, open tasting in in London. So, I and we are not the only ones pursuing this 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 project. Although I don't think that, uh, uh, besides the post and the modern meadow operation, I don't. I'm not aware of anybody else doing this. So there were several instances where either us. Or, or the post people tasted this kind of meat. Theirs is, it has some, some overlap between the, what, what they are doing and what we are doing, but we are pursuing different products. So I ate twice meat, but I ate other things that 
resulted already from this project, except I will not tell you what those are because those are still proprietary information. I believe that we will reveal something soon, but I can't, I can't talk about that right now. Okay, but, but my, the core of my question, and I will come back later to the work of Dr. Mark Post because I, I've been actually trying to interview him here and we've been in conversation with his assistant, but uh, how do we know it's safe? That's the core issue. Aren't you sort of taking a leap of faith when you're reaching this? Well, how, how, can you be say, how can you be sure that what you buy in the store is safe, right? Uh, and there were instances where it turned out not to be safe. Yeah, sure, USDA uh, stamped and this and that, but there's never 100% uh, security there. Uh, now, in the process that we are following, everything is done under sterile conditions. So there is no, there's no way to contaminate anything. And if, if we do contaminate something, well, then we're, we, we will learn about it anyway because the cells that we're working with will die or will show some very peculiar behavior. So we control every step of the process. Uh, we take the, the cells from the animal by the biopsy uh, and, and of course, we have the cells, but uh, even those cells, then those cells go through a lot of processing under, again, sterile conditions, under sterile controlled conditions. So uh, my answer to this question is, no, I cannot be 100% sure that what you're going to eat is perfectly, perfectly um, uh, secure or, or safe. But I would say, if you're not scared of eating industrial meat, this one is much safer. Mm -hmm. Now, now going back to, to the work of Dr. Mark Post in, in the Netherlands, how is your work different or similar to his? Well, first of all, Mark Post is still in academia. Uh, Modern Meadow is a company. Now, that doesn't mean much, except that uh, a company has different objectives than an academic researcher. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, uh, uh, Mark Post got an infusion of money from Sergey Brin, a co-founder of, of Google, and uh, the understand, my understanding is that, that, the, that those funds were pre-dedicated and, and still are of making a hamburger, and that's what he has done. Well, he showed a hamburger because it was a, to some extent, it was a fake hamburger. Uh, I have to say, uh, I, I, I have all my admiration for, for what Mark Post did because it was a fantastic accomplishment. I feel that a little bit it was a brute force effort because just finding the, the, the way to grow those specialized cells that he calls uh, stem cells, it's called specialized stem cells, called the satellite cells that eventually turn into skeletal muscle cells. Um, but it was, it was a brute force effort in the sense that, hey, let's see how we can grow it, how we can grow it. Yeah, yeah it will cost $340,000, but we just want to show that it is possible to do. Now, that hamburger that they revealed in London in the summer Let's face it, it had a few tricky things there, you know, bee juice and then this and that to stick together. Uh, certainly it had, it had skeletal muscle uh, components in it and, and it was possible to cook it, but it was not a 100% equivalent of what you can buy in McDonald's. Now, so, so again, having said that, I think it's a fantastic accomplishment and it, it helps all of us. Uh, so he is concentrating on a hamburger because of maybe because of the constraints under which he's working uh, due to his funding. Modern Meadow was also funded uh, by another billionaire by the Peter Thiel Foundation, Breakout Lab, but we also got funding from the USDA of all places the USDA is giving us money to, to learn how to make cultured meat. Uh, the Department of Agriculture, that of course is 
supporting all the meat producers and the farmers. So that's by itself is, 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 a, is I think, is a fantastic accomplishment. And we, I think we are looking at it in a broader sense. We are not concentrating on hamburger. There's no, for us, there's no re really need for that. We are trying to come up with a yummy product that is rich in animal proteins. It does not have to be a hamburger. It could be many other things. And so I'm giving you a little hint on what might be coming. Um, but there are, you can obviously think about many, many products. Burritos. Are, yeah, many things. Tacos, what not. Anything okay. that, uh, well, tacos still will have ground meat, which is essentially the same as a hamburger. But there are many other things that, that are not hamburger and are still meat products are still nutritionally equivalent or sometimes even better than industrial meat. So that's the way, that's where we differ from our cost. Mm -hmm. What in your opinion uh, then would be the most successful example up to date of tissue engineering? Because certainly the one that Dr. Mark Post did in London when he revealed his hamburger was per perhaps the most media sort of reported uh, one. Okay, so uh, uh, okay, let, let, let's make sure that I understood your question correctly. You said, what was the, the biggest accomplishment of tissue engineering? Now, if you really ask this question, then we're not talking about Mark Post, we're not talking about Modern Meadow, because tissue engineering in, in implies also regenerative medicine. Yes, indeed. Thousands. It's much broader. Oh, it's much broader. Yeah, that's so, why I ask like that. Then, then uh, okay, so think about, for example, a kidney that was tissue engineered by Dr. Tony Atala and 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 implanted into 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 human beings. Was it a kidney or a bladder? No, 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 no. The bladder. No, that's, there was no kidney. Uh, it was has never been a kidney implanted, a tissue engineered kidney implanted yeah, into. Yeah, because you said kidney, and that's why I'm asking. Sorry. No, I wanted to say uh, bladder. Yeah, yeah. Leather. Well, I think that's a fantastic accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you probably have heard of um, tracheal segments, the windpipe, tissue engineered by by British scientists in Karolinska Institute, by 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 an Italian doctor. Um, I think those are fantastic accomplishments. Mm -hmm. You're saving lives. Yeah. Now, when, when it comes to that point, saving lives. You could say, okay, making tissue engineering needs uh, dwarfs those, right? Uh, and the ultimate goal, I think, of a scientist, of a tissue engineer is to save lives. I would say those are definitely the, 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 the most spectacular accomplishments. Um, what we are trying to do with leather and, and, and meat should perhaps not be compared with that. That has its own goal niche. niche this one also we want to feed humanity with healthy animal protein we want to produce leather without killing a single animal and without creating harmful effects to the environment uh the niche where we live so i think the two things are are, are not necessarily comparable mm -hmm. comparable only that in the sense that yes it's tissue engineering the technology that is being used is tissue engineering because we're building tissues as well, but the objective is different. Mm -hmm. So fantastic accomplishments in tissue engineering, but that should not diminish in any sense what Mark Post has done, or I would like to believe that what we have accomplished already with the letter. Mm -hmm. What is the biggest misconception about your work that you would like to perhaps clarify once and for all? Well, it's one thing what I would like to clarify, but I'm sure that I will, even if I clarify and, and, and transmit my enthusiasm about it, there always will be skeptics and it say, still will say, oh, this is Frankenstein-ish and, and, you know, hey, I respect everybody's views and, and, uh, and you know, everybody should have his or her own views. So the misconception here is that this is Frankenstein-ish meat I, or food. It, it isn't. There's nothing 
Frankentine is in it. Uh, in my opinion, it's a natural process. We're trying to follow uh, as much as one can under laboratory conditions what is happening in the body. And so, therefore, I don't see anything Frankentinish about it. Uh, it's 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 essentially the same tissue or essentially the same material that we're after for our leather. That that is the major component ingredient of skin tissue, especially when that tissue is dead and you arrive at the animal hide and then you tan it. So again, there is nothing Frankentinish. I at least cannot see what possibly could be there Frankentinish. Uh, I think what I what what would be great, but you're absolutely right. This will require require education, and it will slowly penetrate. I think into uh, the public's uh, opinion is that that this is not genetic engineering. We're not changing any genes here. We are taking the same cells and enticing those cells to do what they do anyway in the body, except that we want them to do it outside of the body. And then there's a lot of technical details here uh, uh, that, that, that I, 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 don't, I don't think we have to go into. Uh, where, w what we need in order to be able to construct uh, the, the, that tissue or that final product that, that otherwise is obtained from starting from the animal. And, and, and one technology that we're using here is, is bioprinting. Mm -hmm. But again, I, 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 don't, I don't see what possibly could be here Frankentinish. I actually would like to interview myself, someone who calls it Frankentinish, why the person is saying it's Frankentinish. I think it's, it's really the question of ignorance. Mm -hmm. I mean, and and you may not expect you don't want to you, you you can't expect of course that everybody in the street will know what tissue engineering is and therefore if you don't know something about something then it's easy to say hey it's Frankenstein uh -huh. that's I think is scientific ignorance. I agree. I agree entirely with you. That's why we're trying to dispel the ignorance with with my show here for for the past four or five years. Uh, now. We are approaching the end of our interview, so I, I want to ask you the last two or three questions here. Uh, and this, the next one is this: What's your greatest dream? The biggest dream that you have? Oh, you mean scientific? If that's <laughs> what you prefer to talk about, sure. Yeah, but I, not necessarily. Well, uh, I, I, I think we are sort of moving and 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 acting right right now within this uh, professional and scientific uh, uh, framework so why don't we concentrate on that um, well that's a very good question though uh, because one of my dreams actually has come true it is Organovo Organovo is a is a beautiful company it's a uh, it's incredible to see where that company has 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 arrived, uh, or is 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 moving to, um, and uh, so that 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 certainly was a dream, and that dream has come come true. So, uh, what else is coming out of Organovo? Whatever comes out of Organovo, it's a bonus for me. Now, once one dream comes true, then of course you your appetite. Uh, uh, got enhanced and 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 say okay so m maybe I can set a, a even a bigger goal and the next goal is of course to bring modern meadow to first perhaps to the level where Organovo is right now and when I say to the level meaning uh, organ um, modern meadow has maybe about eight employees right now Organovo has 45 so yes building or uh, modern meadow uh, where Organovo is but beyond beyond because i can see what is beyond this has no boundaries what we are trying to do with modern meadow um, uh, uh, people everywhere in the world love eating and and uh and so we are basically try love eating also i think many of us have aesthetic uh abilities so to say we we like to wear nice things. We 
we want to feel comfortable. So the leather direction is the one that should address this aspiration. And the other is, is the meat and, and just God knows where that is going to go. And, and to finish with uh, this, this thought, leather and meat are only two possible products. There are many more that, that we can think about. And so really, the, the, as I said, the limit is only the sky for, for modern metal, probably more so than for Organovo, because Organovo is human regenerative medicine. Mm -hmm. Not that, that that's a small domain, no, it's a vast domain, but thinking about building something to, to, be, to be worn or to be seated on or to be, uh, to be enjoyed, uh, meaning the leather items, and then eating yummy food, uh, without again killing animals in the prepared in an ethical way, and if that comes through, then then I I will be a very happy camper. Not that I am not now, but even happier. <laughs> Doctor Forgach, for those of our viewers who want to follow up on your work, what's the best place to find more about it and sort of follow it? Well, certainly Organovo has its own website. Modern Meadow has its own website. That's the uh, that's the first thing to to do. Um, uh, those things, especially especially this, of course, the the uh, the products that that are, are are eventually coming out from Modern Meadow. There's a lot of controversy controversy around that. Therefore, there is a lot of write up uh, media articles about it. Some of them have little value, in my opinion. You cannot prevent that to happen. I think for those people who really want to have an informed opinion, uh, uh, it is it is probably the two companies' websites that I would I would start with mm -hmm. and go from there. And the very last question that I have is, we've been talking to you for over forty five minutes now. What would you like for our viewers to take away from this conversation? What, in your opinion, should be the the final most important message that you want to send out? Dream, 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 and uh, and 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 if you are persistent, uh, yes, again, it's on the basis of my my own career. You need the dreams, you need the intensity, you need luck. If those three come together, then then you will succeed. Now, jokes aside, uh, I think it's. I think we we live in a in a time when it's really difficult to say this is impossible. I think we got to the point that we have the tools or at least potentially have the tools and the knowledge that we can accomplish anything we want, at least things related to our human life. And, and that's, that's something that uh, I can't tell you how excited I am about that. And this is the, 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 the thought that I would like to convey. Dr. Gabor Forgach, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank you very much for interviewing me. Yeah.